Okay, we're covering 5-2 today, which is bisectors of triangles. Remember to take something out to take notes with and complete the check it out problems. Our two learning targets today, I can, I can prove and apply properties of perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, and I can prove and apply properties of angle bisectors of a triangle. All right, a few vocabulary words. Three or more line, when three or more lines intersect at one point, the lines are said to be concurrent. So the point of concurrency is the point where the three intersect. Or the point of intersection. Can we say that? Yes. Yeah, so we probably will say point of intersection instead of point of concurrency sometimes. The point of concurrency where we have three perpendicular bisectors intersecting is called the circumcenter of the triangle. And that brings us to the circumcenter theorem. So here's our perpendicular bisectors, and they all meet here at the circumcenter, and it says the circumcenter of the triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So the distance from this point to any vertex here, here, or here is going to be the same distance, and that's what this says. PA is congruent to PB, which is congruent to PC. So for a circumcenter, it can be um, one of three places Related to the triangle can be inside the triangle, point P, the circumcenter is inside the triangle for an acute triangle. Obtuse triangle can be on the outside, or in a right triangle, it'll actually be on the triangle itself. All right, so the circumcenter is the center of a circumscribed circle. So what does that mean? We have our triangle here, and if we drew a circle around it so that it touched all the vertices on the triangle, that's called circumscribed around the triangle. The center of this circle is also the circumcenter of the triangle. So here's our first example. Uh, we have segment DG, segment EG, and FG are perpendicular bisectors of triangle ABC. So here are the segments DG, EG, and FG. They are perpendicular bisectors, which mean that the sides are all congru or the mid segments are congruent. I want to find the length of GC, which is this one here. According to the circumcenter theorem, GC is going to be the same as BG and AG. So GC is going to equal BG, which will be 13.4. All right, so here's a triangle. M, M, Z, K, Z, and L, Z are all perpendicular bisectors, and you need to find G, M, and G, K, and J, Z. Okay, this ex in this example, we want to find the circumcenter of triangle H, J, K with the vertices H at 0, 0. So let's plot that. H is here at 0, 0. J is at 10, 0. And we have K at 0, 6. So we can connect all these points and then find the circumcenter. OK, so to find our circumcenter, we graph the three points we were given. Notice that line HJ, segment HJ, is horizontal, and that segment HK is vertical. So to find the equation for two of the lines, find the midpoint, because it's a perpendicular bisector. So for the horizontal one, find the midpoint, which would be x equals 5. So we have the line here at x equals 5 is one line. Our second line, we can take it off the vertical line of HK, find the midpoint, which is here at 3. And our line now becomes y equals 3. So where these two lines intersect at this point, at 5, 3. So 5, 3 is our circumcenter. You only need to find equations for two of the lines. And so when you have a horizontal and a vertical line, those lines are the easiest ones to find the equations for. All right. So you will find the circumcenter of triangle GOH using these points. So graph it. Find your two perpendicular bisectors and see where they intersect. So now we're going to look at the end center of a triangle. A triangle has three angles, and we're
and which means it's going to have three angle bisectors. The angle bisectors are also concurrent, meaning they're going to intersect at one point. At that point, it's called the end center of the triangle. So now we're looking at angle bisectors. So here we have angle bisector of angle A, angle B, and angle C, where they all intersect. They intersect at P, and that tells us now that PX is, con is equal to PY is equal to YZ, or PZ. And so remember that distance between a point and a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to a line. We did that a couple of units ago, or last unit. Mm -hmm. So the dis this is the distance, the shortest distance. Okay, unlike the circumcenter, the in center is always inside the triangle. So notice here in an acute triangle, it's here, an obtuse triangle, and right triangle. So it will always be inside the triangle. Because we're always bisecting the angles. Right. So again, the um, circumcenter now, the, the triangle in center, or the in center, thank you. The in center is the center of the triangle um, inscribed circle. So we have our triangle, we inscribe a circle. So a circle is going to hit all three sides of the triangle. And the center of the circle is going to be the in center. All right, so here's an example. MP and LP are angle bisectors. We want to find the, dif dif the distance from P to MN. So what is the distance? Remember, the distance is going to be a line from P that's perpendicular to MN. And our theorem says that that distance, the, the distance of from the in center to any side is always the same. We see that QP, the distance from P to um, ML, which is QP, is 5. So that means that the distance from P to N is going to be um, 5. All right, now it, we want to find angle PMN. All right, so I'm using the fact that we have angle bisectors to find our angle. So first of all, we know that this angle here is 50. Since this is an angle bisector, we know this whole angle is going to be twice as big or 100 degrees. And then we know that this is 20, and triangle sum theorem tells us that this whole angle plus the other two are going to be 180. So if I subtract 100, whoops, that's not very pretty. If I subtract Excuse me. So if we subtract 120 from 180, I get 60 degrees. This whole angle is 60. Since this is an angle bisector, I know that angle PMN, which is this angle here, let me highlight it for you, right here, is going to be half of that. So it's going to be 60 divided by 2 or 30 degrees. Nice work. So you have to check it out. So Again, we have the end center here's at X, and the end center in where all the three angle bisectors come together at the point of intersection. So good luck. All right, so the city planner wants to build a new library between school, post office, and, and hospital, and wants it to be the same distance from all three buildings. So here's my school, my hospital, my post office, and it's going to make a triangle. And something that's going to be the same distance from each vertex is going to be the circumcenter. So I'm going to find the perpendicular bisector to each of, those, each of the sides of the triangle. And the place where they meet is going to be equidistance to all three vertices. That's point of intersection or point of concurrency. <laughs> that's correct. So here's your check out. Have fun. And they got a little picture drawn there for you already. You have to justify why it works. All right, so that concludes this lesson, the summary. The circumcenter is equidistance from the vertices of, of the triangle. So to find the circumcenter, you want to find the point where the three segment bisectors intersect, and you're going to graph the triangle, find the equations for the two perpendicular bisectors, and then find the point of intersection of those two lines. Ms. Zakin, did you have something to say? Okay, so this is perpendicular bisectors.
and then the point of intersection of the two perpendicular bisectors is your circumcenter. The inner center is equidistant from the sides, and it's always inside the triang triangle, the point where the two angle bisectors intersect is your in, in center. All right, get, bring your questions. We'll see you next time.